Hello, welcome back to another episode of My Book of Mormon. This will be episode 18, where we're going to jump into Jacob chapter 7. So, yeah, I think we're uh, we're done with Zenos for now. That was the, the fun prophet that we heard about, who uh, had some gardening tips for us. And, uh, yeah, so uh, let's see, what, I don't know. Because chapter 5 was all about Zenos, but 6 wasn't, I don't think. I don't even remember what 6 was. And it must not have been that important. Anyway, a few corrections from last time. One is that, uh, yeah, I looked it up, and apparently tree grafting really is a thing. I didn't know it was a thing. You know, apparently you really can take a branch off one tree and, like, get it to grow into another tree. I had no idea. So, yeah, I apologize for making fun of that. I thought that was uh, pretty bizarre sounding, but apparently it's something that's done. Yeah. I don't know if it's done to the extent that that chapter explained it. Like, you could have different fruits on the same tree. I, I don't know. Maybe you can. I don't know. But anyway, tree grafting is is a real practice. And, uh, yeah, I didn't know that it was, so sorry about that. The other thing I got, so thank you to several people I actually pointed out. I kept reading this, the words in fine, and I was confused. Like, what in the world does in fine mean? Well, apparently, it's Latin, and it's supposed to be pronounced in fine. Yeah, in fine. So, who knew? And I guess it means, like, in conclusion, or something like that. Like, yeah, therefore. As an, I can, therefore would be another word, right? So, uh, in fine. So special thanks to Mark for actually not only telling me that it was a Latin term, but even giving me the correct pronunciation. So, if I'm still pronouncing it wrong, you can all blame Mark, because he's the one that told me to pronounce it this way. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, once again, thanks to everybody that's emailed me. I, I admit I am behind. I like to reply to every email that I get. Uh, but, yeah, work got a little busy. And when it comes to responding to work emails or podcast emails, I'm afraid, I'm afraid work wins, because that's where I get the paycheck. So... I, I do intend, to, to just to everyone know, if you've sent me an email, I have read it. I, I promise and I appreciate it. I will get around to emailing everyone back. Same thing with comments on the, on, the, on the website. So actually, first of all, if you want to send an email and haven't, it's, of course, comments at mybookofmormonpodcast.com. So you can just send me an email. And, uh, yeah, so the website, which is, of course, www.mybookofmormonpodcast.com. You can leave uh, postings there on each episode, tons of them there. I, at one point, I had, I had started like replying to all of them, but then it became just insurmountable. <laughs> There's just so much that, that's going on there. So I've kind of decided I'm letting the website kind of have a life of its own. It doesn't mean I'm never going to post there. I, I, I think I will like put some comments if, if I see something that I really want to respond to. But for the most part, don't be offended. I do read every single thing. I get an email notification everything anytime something's posted. And so I do read them all. Uh, but I'm not, I don't intend to reply to all of them. So don't feel bad because it's just, there's just too many. And then, yeah, I did catch up on Facebook and Twitter. So I'm all caught up there on thanking everybody and commenting on different things there. So I've, I've, I think I'm, I'm pretty up to speed with all my, uh, social media obligations, but I am, I am admittedly behind on the email. So I'll catch up on that. Anyway, uh, all right. I think we can just start reading. So we're going to get into Jacob chapter seven. And now it came to pass, drink, right off the bat. Gotta love it. Actually, someone did email me and said that perhaps we should have like a, a drink rating for every show. So like the last one would have been like a, a five, I don't know, five beer bottle rating, right? Out of five. <laughs> because there were just so many times to drink. So I don't know. If somebody wants to do that, if somebody wants to actually count them, I'll go back and update all the posts on the website, right? In the descriptions to say, this is a, this is a three bottle drinking game or a five bottle. Now I'm happy to do that. But I am not going to go back and listen to all of them and count all the number of times you're supposed to drink. That would, yeah, I'm just not going to do that. So if anybody else wants to volunteer, that'd be great. But anyway, even if we don't have a, a drink rating for every show, we at least know that this one started out with a drink. So hopefully we got that out of the way. And now it came to pass, after some years had passed away, there came a man among the people of Nephi. Okay, there came a man among the people of Nephi. So if he wasn't already a Nephite... And I think a few chapters ago it said that the, pretty much all that existed in the promised land was Nephites and Lamanites. So I guess this guy's a Lamanite, right? I mean, what else would he be unless he came over on his own magic boat? I don't know. But anyway, okay, let's see what more about. Okay, came a man among the people of Nephi whose name was Sherem. No, Sherem. Sh yeah, there's only one E. S-H-E-R-E-M. So that, that's probably Sherem, not Sherem. I'm going with Sherem. And uh, let the emails commence if that's wrong. All right. And it came to pass, drink again, that he began to preach among the people and to declare unto them that there should be no Christ. Mm. 
Sherem's up to no good, and he preached many things which were flattering unto the people. Oh, yeah, he was great in those pants. Yeah, trust me. Mm -hmm. And this he did, that he might overthrow the doctrine of Christ. Uh oh, he is, he is out to get Christ, who <laughs> doesn't exist. All right. I mean, and I'm not saying that to be insulting. You can believe in Christ, but, but still, these people at this time were hundreds of years before Christ. So, yeah, he's trying to just overthrow the doctrine of a man that won't exist for at least 500 years. How dare he? And he labored diligently that he might lead away the hearts of the people, insomuch that he did lead away many hearts. Hmm, success. And knowing that I, Jacob, had faith in Christ, who should come, he sought much opportunity that he might come unto me. Ooh, he might come unto me. Well, the last time we heard about someone coming unto someone, who was it? Uh, I think it was Isaiah came unto the prophetess or whatever, and they had a baby. So sounds like Sherem is trying to make a baby with Jacob. I don't think it's. I don't think it works like that. Anyway, and he was learned that he had perfect knowledge of the language of the people, and wherefore he could use much flattery and much power of speech according to the power of the devil. <laughs> of course, because being learned, yeah, that is that is the work of the devil right there. All right, so he was a smooth talker. And he had hoped to shake me from the faith, notwithstanding the many revelations and the many things which I had seen concerning these things. For I truly had seen angels. Really? Jacob actually saw angels? Well, all right. That would have been a fun story. Last time we uh, had, a, had, had like an angel come down, it was Moroni, right? And that, was a, that was a fun one. All right. And they had ministered unto me. And also I had heard the voice of the Lord speaking unto me in very word. In very word? From time to time, wherefore I could not be shaken. In very word. That's strange wording. <laughs> All right. I guess it means like in a lot of words. He, he The Lord, Lord taught. So I don't think he didn't see God. He saw angels, it says. But he only heard the voice of the Lord. Yeah. Which, which he d heard from time to time. Yeah. All right. And it came to pass, drink, that he came unto me. Uh-oh. Who? Who came? The Lord? The Lord is speaking? No. No. I think this is Sherem. I had to actually go back a page to make sure I was saying the name right. Okay, so I think it's Sherem came, came unto, coming unto him, whatever. And on this wise did he speak unto me, saying, and on this wise, W-I-S-E, that's, hmm, all right. Brother Jacob, I have sought much opportunity that I might speak unto you, for I have heard and also know that thou goest as about much preaching that which ye call the gospel or the doctrine of Christ. And ye have led away much of this people, that they pervert the right way of God, and keep not the law of Moses, which is the right way, and convert the law of Moses into the worship of a being which ye say, shay, bleh, which ye say shall come many hundred years hence. Hmm. Sounds like me and Sherem have a little bit in common there. <laughs> He's saying the same thing I am. All right. And now behold, I, Sherem, declare unto you that this is blasphemy, for no man knoweth of such things, for he cannot tell of things to come. And after this manner did Sherem contend against me. Well, Sherem's making the, he's making the argument I'm making, right? So he's like, you're, you're teaching all these people to behave in a way to impress someone that's not going to come around for hundreds of years. Well, that's nonsense. Yeah. Although, I thought that it said, a few chapters back, I can't remember which episode, that until Christ came, everybody had to keep obeying the law of Moses. I thought, I thought that's how, it, what it said. Might have read that wrong. But Sherem's kind of saying, Hey, Jacob, you're telling people that they don't have to follow the law of Moses because Jesus is coming someday. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which one's right. I don't know that it matters. But anyway, Shrem's saying, enough of this Jesus nonsense. He's not, we don't have to worry about that for hundreds of years. Stop it. But behold, the Lord God poured in his spirit into my soul. What? Insomuch that I did confound him in all his words. Poured his spirit? What? <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's see if we can figure this out. Behold, the Lord God poured in his spirit into my soul. What on earth does that mean? Insomuch that I did confound him in all his words. So, uh, I can't, I can't. So it's like God took Sherem's soul and put it in Jacob's soul, I guess. Is there a difference between a spirit and a soul? Uh, that's just, that was a bunch of, I know what every one of those words meant. But put together, they made no sense. I don't, but anyway, apparently Sherem's now confounded. He's confused in his words. So the smooth talker has been knocked down a peg. Somehow with his soul-swapping thing. Uh, all right. And I said unto him, Deniest thou the Christ who shall come? And he said, If there should be a Christ, I would not deny him. 
<laughs> exactly. If he comes right now, I'll be like, mm, there he is. All right. But I know that there is no Christ, neither has been, nor ever will be. Now, Saram, how can you know there never will be? That's a bit of a stretch. If someone said to me, you know, do you believe that so-and-so is going to be exist in 500 years? I'd be like, well, probably not. I mean, that's kind of hard to see what's going to happen in the future, but I can't, I can't say no. I can't know for a fact that it won't happen because, you know, that's not going to happen. Anyway. All right. And I said unto him, believest thou the scriptures? And he said, yay. Actually, I think that counts. That, that is a definite yay. If he had said yes, I would have let it pass. That yay. Drink up, people. That was an oddly placed yay, right? Usually they're mid-sentence, you know, and Jacob said yay. But this one, he said yay. So that, that does count. We're going to drink. And I said unto him, Then ye do not understand them, for they truly testify of Christ. Behold, I say unto you that none of the prophets have written nor prophesied, save they have spoken concerning this Christ. Sorry, it took me a second to turn the page. All right, so yeah, he's saying, like, how can you say that you believe the Scripture when the Scripture clearly says that Christ is coming? Yeah, it's clear. So I, I think that the prophecies of the Old Testament are a bit of a stretch <laughs> to say that they prophesied Christ. It sounds more like when the New Testament was written or the Gospels were written, they intentionally kind of change parts of the story to conform to the prophecies. It's kind of the way it reads, but uh, what do I know? I wasn't there. Okay. And this is not all. It has been made manifest unto me, for I have heard and seen. And it also has been made manifest unto me by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore, if I... Wait, I know if there should be no atonement made, all mankind must be lost. Okay. Yeah, back to that uh, great creation story of God made us all sin. Wonderful. And it came to pass, drink, that he said unto me, Show me a sign by this power of the Holy Ghost, in which ye know so much. Yeah. He's like, all right, you're all talk. <laughs> Show me something. Yeah, Sherem's like, hey, Jacob, you see God. Good for you. I haven't seen crap. So, you know, it's brilliant. And I said unto him, what am I that I should tempt God to show <laughs> unto thee a sign in the thing which thou knowest to be true? Yet thou wilt deny it. I'm sorry. Yet yet they, bleh, yet they thou wilt deny it. There you go. I said will. I meant wilt. I'm going to add that T. Because thou art the devil. Man, Jacob. He's just doubting that you have visions. It's going to make him the devil. Hmm. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but it is. <laughs> but if God shall smite thee, let that be a sign unto thee that he has power, both in heaven and in earth, and also that Christ shall come. And thy will, O Lord, be done, and not mine. Great. So Jacob's like, he's like, can you just prove to me that you've seen God and he's talked to you? And Jacob's like, no. But I'll tell you what, if God wants to prove himself true, he's going to light you on fire. <laughs> right? I mean, I didn't say light you on fire, but it said smite. And I think we all know God well enough to know if he's got some smiting to do, there will be flames. You know, that's kind of his way. And it came to pass, drink, that when I, Jacob, had spoken these words, the power of the Lord came upon him, insomuch that he fell to the earth. And it came to pass, drink again, that he was nourished for the space of many days. He was nourished. What? So, all right. So God made him fall and then fed him. Oh, boy, there's a... There's a serious smiting. God's in a good mood today, if that's all he did. Hmm, okay. And it came to pass, drink, that he said unto the people, Gather together on the morrow, for I shall die. Wherefore, I desire to speak unto the people before I shall die. Hmm, sad. I guess he's, uh, <laughs> I don't understand. He was nourished. And now he's like, I'm going to die tomorrow. I don't know how he knows he's going to die. Seemed like he was well nourished, but, hmm. And it came to pass, drink again. Man, this is, I've been losing track, but I'm afraid this might be another five drinker. Or a, a five five bottle rating is what I mean by that, because there's a lot of came to passes. All right, that on the morrow the multitude were gathered together, and he spake plainly unto them, and denied the things which he had taught them, and confessed the Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost and the ministering of angels. So there you go. So if anybody doubts this, God's gonna make you fall, and he's gonna feed you, and then you're gonna be like, oh, I'm convinced. There you go. I'm so well nourished. <laughs> that must have meant something else. He was nourished for the space of many days. That doesn't. Why on earth would that be bad? Like, how did that show him anything? He just fell. He fell. He fell over, and he got fed. And now he's like, oh, I was so wrong. Oh. <laughs> okay. That seemed uh, very convincing. And he spake plainly unto them that he had been deceived by the power of the devil. And he spake of hell and of eternity and of eternal punishment. Uh, all right. And he said, I fear lest I have committed the unpardonable sin, for I have lied unto God. Oof. For I denied the Christ, and said that I believe the scriptures, 
and they truly testify of him. Because I have thus lied unto God, I greatly fear, lest my case shall be awful, but I confess unto God. Ugh, all right, so this is just a, I don't know, I, I don't understand how falling over would have solved the problem for him, but you know, it is the argument Jacob made, right? So Jacob said to him, look, the scriptures clearly say Jesus is coming. You're saying you believe the scriptures, and then you say you don't believe Jesus is coming. One of those two has to be a lie. So, and he's like, fine, I was lying about Christ not coming. You caught me, Jacob, and you made me fall <laughs> and fed me. Okay. And it came to pass, drink, that when he had said these words, he could say no more. And he gave up the ghost. <laughs> gave up the ghost. I guess that's another way of saying he died. He gave up the ghost. Well, there you go. Enjoy uh, ghosthood. <laughs> what was his name? Sherem. Enjoy, enjoy you being a ghost, Sherem. All right. And when the multitude had witnessed that he spake these things as he was about to give up the ghost. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's still funny. Give up the ghost. Imagine saying to a threat, mess with me, I'll make you give up your ghost, yo. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> sorry. That was probably only funny to me. Now that I say it, it didn't sound that funny. Okay. All right. Uh, they were astonished exceedingly, insomuch that the power of God came down upon them, and they were overcome that they fell to the earth. Uh-oh. <laughs> the, ma the multitude, they all fell. Now they're going to get nourished. They're going to die. Now this thing was pleasing unto me, Jake. <laughs> what? So Jacob, let's get this right. Uh, so uh, I keep forgetting his name. Uh, Sherem, he fell to the earth, and then it, like after a few days of being nourished, caused him to die, right? Now, all the multitude listen to, to, to Sherem's, like, conversion. They're, like, amazed by it. Now they all fall, right? So now, if, you, if you're following the logic here, this multitude is probably going to die in a few days, right? They're probably all dead. So the next verse says, this was pleasing unto me. <laughs> Great, Jacob. <laughs> you're, a, you're a heck of a leader. Watching your multitude just fall over, assuming to their death, and it's like, ah, that's all good. He's pleased. All right, for I had requested it of my father who was in heaven, for he had heard my cry and answered my prayer. And this Jacob was like, God, please kill all these people. Yeah, just kill them. And God's like, you got it, Jacob. You're my boy. I got your back. I'm taking them out. And it came to pass, drink, that peace and the love of God was restored again among the people. And they searched the scriptures and hearkened no more towards the words of this wicked man. Well, I guess they didn't die. They just fell. We still don't understand how Sherem died. That didn't make any sense, did it? But apparently these other people, they just fell, but they didn't die. I don't think so. They didn't give up their ghosts, didn't say. So I think it was just a, uh, just fell. Hmm, a little, just fell over. No, no big deal. Okay. So maybe I was being a bit mean, being a bit, being a bit judgmental of Jacob, because it sounded like they were all about to die. But apparently they didn't. And he must have known that. Perhaps the Lord told him. All right. Uh, and it came to pass drink that many means were devised to reclaim and restore the Lamanites to the knowledge of the truth. But it was all, but it all was vain, for they delighted in wars and bloodshed, and they had eternal hatred against us, their brethren. And they sought by the power of their arms to destroy us continually. I don't know how the Lamanites suddenly jumped in. And by the way, I know I've been doing a good job of saying Lamanites instead of laminate, or laminite. And this time I almost said laminate, or laminite. I, I, can't, even, I can't even say the wrong way right. Anyway. Uh, I just figured it out just now. It's when I see it in writing, <laughs> when I see the word in my head, if I'm just talking about the Lamanites, I can remember Lamanite. I can say that. But when I see it written, my brain immediately wants to say laminate or Lamanite, La bleh, 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 whatever. I don't want to say it wrong <laughs> anyway. So that was it. Cause as soon as I saw it, I was like, restore the Lamanites. Yeah. Whew. All right. All right. Sorry. Just, just thought I would share that little tidbit. Okay, and, and and where did they, where, we just jumped in the middle. So we had the Shrem guy, and he's talking his smack, and then he got converted, and everybody fell over, and then it's like, oh, by the way, just just if you were wondering, we, we tried to, to do, to, you know, bring the Lamanites back, you know, to get them to convert to, but they just, they just love war. They just love to kill us. They hate us. <laughs> All right. And just kind of popped in out of nowhere. Wherefore, the people of Nephi did fortify against them with their arms and with all their might, trusting in the God and the rock of their salvation. Wherefore, they became as yet conquerors of their enemies. Really? They conquered them? When? So what? Are the Lamanites gone? It says they conquered them. I don't know. I don't Okay. Why can't they tell us that story? That's all I'm saying. Like You're saying that there's all these wars and bloodshed. And they're like fortifying their cities, and it's sounding like we're got to get really good. And it's like, yeah, and we won. 
thanks. That's that's great. It's like saying, oh, there was a dragon. All right, moving on. It's like, no, tell me about the dragon. Anyway. Hmm. And it came to pass, drink, that I, Jacob, began to be old, and the records of this people being kept on the other plates of Nephi, wherefore I conclude this record, declaring that I have written according to the best of my knowledge, by saying that the time passed away with us, and also our lives passed away like as it were us, or as if it were unto us a dream. <laughs> okay, their whole lives were like a dream. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, if you think you're hearing God in your head, then yeah, it might be... <laughs> might be very much like a dream. All right. We being a lonesome and solemn people, wanderers, cast out from Jerusalem, born in tribulation, in a wilderness, and hatred of our brethren, which caused wars and contentions, wherefore we did mount, mourn out our days. Yeah, there's a, a, such victims. Yeah, it's just terrible. Let's not forget how you got here, Jacob, okay? I know it wasn't your fault, right? It was your dad. But your dad, he didn't get kicked out of Jerusalem necessarily. It's not like he was like, you know, charged with a crime he didn't commit. He was going around to everyone in Jerusalem telling him that they were, like, awful people, right? You're all abominations, bro. <laughs> what did he think would happen? They're like, get the hell out. So, yeah, that's what happened. And then even, like, you could have gone anywhere, Jacob. You could have you could have lived anywhere you wanted. But, no, you decided to build a boat, go across the world. So, you know, none of this is not, you're, you're acting like the victim. But you kind of, you know, you made your bed. So I think I think you need to sleep in it a little there. You know, quit whining about it. And I, Jacob, saw that I must soon go down to my grave. Mm. No, come on, Jacob. Give up your ghost first. All right. Wherefore, I said unto my father, Enos. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What in the world? I said unto my son, Enos. Why on earth did I say father when the word was S-O-N? That was weird. I don't My brain's playing tricks on me today. All right. I said unto my son, Enos, take these plates. And I told him the things which my brother Nephi had commanded me. And he promised obedience unto the commands. Which, remember, the command was, write whatever you want. But don't mess with what I, what I wrote with. I think that was the command. And I make an end of my writing unto, upon these plates, which writing has been small. And to the reader, I bid farewell, hoping that many of my brethren may read my words. Brethren, adieu. Whoa, suddenly French. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, they spoke French in the uh, Nephite tribe there. But uh, you know what? I gotta hand it to Jacob. He's the first one that actually said good, addressed the reader. He's like, to you, reader, uh, farewell. Well, Farewell, Jacob. That was very that was very kind of you. Nice way to end it. All right, so uh, he's going down to his grave. Turn the page, and we have the Book of Enos. So I guess we're uh, just jumping right in. Well, this is kind of good, right? Because this, I think we're just going to keep having story. Yeah, I like story. I like story more than I like the you know all the prophesying and dreaming. That was that was rough, but the story stuff's fun. So yeah, I guess we're jumping into the Book of Enos. And please, if I'm, I think Sherem was like a short. Uh, character. I think he's gone. So if I pronounce that one wrong, no big deal. But Enos, I mean, there's a whole book named after him. So I'm saying Enos wrong, tell me. But I, I don't know, how else could you pronounce E-N-O-S? Enos? <laughs> I don't know. I'm saying Enos, because that sounds, I think that, that's got to be right. Anyway, all right. So let's see, this is Jacob's son, Enos, and he is next. He is the next plater. All right. Behold, it came to pass. Ooh. Uh, did we say it had to be and it came to pass? No, I think, um, no, this is a drink. It came to pass, drink. There you go. Behold, it came to pass that I, Enos, knowing my father, that he was just, he was a just man, for he taught me in his language, and also in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and blessed be the name of my God for it. Okay. What do you mean in his language? Do they speak a different language than everyone else? I don't, hmm, maybe. Doesn't say which language. And I will tell you of the wrestle which I had before God. The wrestle. Enos was wrestling God. Well, there you have it. That's okay. Before I received a remission of my sins. All right, so before he got kind of forgiven, he was a, he was a God wrestler. All right, Enos must be a pretty tough guy. Behold, I went to hunt beasts in the forest, and the words which I had often heard my father speak concerning eternal life and the joy of the saints sunk deep into my heart. And my soul hungered, and I kneeled down before my Maker, and I cried unto him in mighty prayer and supplication for mine own soul. And all the day long I did cry unto him, yea, drink! And when the night came, I did still raise my voice high, that it reached the heavens. <laughs> wow. You, uh, yeah, you, I doubt that. You would have to yell pretty loud to hear it from space. Actually, I don't think it's possible. It's not. You know, it's it, you might have thought it reached heaven, but, yeah, no. 
don't think so. And there came a voice unto me saying, Enos, thy sins are forgiven thee, and thou shalt be blessed. <laughs> I assume it was God talking. Who else would, would it be? So that I used my God voice. And I, Enos, knew that God could not lie. Wherefore, my guilt was swept away. Well, he did lie to Adam and Eve. Enos, maybe you should read your scripture a little more. He, he can lie. He can't. <laughs> anyway. And I said, Lord, how is it done? And he said unto me, Because of thy faith in Christ, whom thou hast never before heard nor seen. And many years pass away before he shall manifest himself in the flesh. Wherefore, go to thy faith hath made thee whole. Well, there you have it. The mystery is solved. Even before Christ came, if you believe that he was going to come, right? If you had faith that he was coming, well, yeah, your sins, null and void. Wipe it away. You got a clean slate. Oh, you believe that? Mm, great. No, no sin. Now it came to pass, drink, that when I had heard these words, I began to feel desire for the welfare of my brethren, the Nephites. Wherefore, I did pour out my whole soul unto God for them. Uh, okay, a desire for the welfare of my brethren. Okay, so he's just worried about them. Mm, that's fine. Well, he is kind of like next in line to be like the the priest or prophet or whatever they call themselves. So I, I suppose he's, he's, you know, being he's being groomed to be the future leader. It's good for him. And while I was thus struggling in the spirit, behold, the voice of the Lord came into my mind again, saying, I will visit thy brethren according to their diligence in keeping my commandments. I have given unto them this land, and it is a holy land, and I curse it not, save be for the cause of iniquity. Wherefore, I will visit my brethren according as I have said, and their transgressions will I bring down with sorrow upon their own heads. <laughs> Great. Sorry. Usually God, like, just kind of speaks in phrases. I know to do that God voice for so long. He, he really went on a rant there. So, yeah, God's basically saying, I'm going to come visit him, I think. Yeah, I'll visit thy brother. Yeah, he's going to come visit. And uh, if he sees any sin, he's going to bring down some sorrow on their heads. Just a smack down from God. So look out, Nevites. God's coming. And after I, Enos, had heard these words, my faith began to be unshaken in the Lord. And I prayed unto him with many long strugglings for my brethren, the Lamanites. Oh, so now he's worried about the other tribe. Hmm. And it came to pass, drink. That after I had prayed and labored with all diligence, the Lord said unto me, I will grant unto thee according to thy desires, because of thy faith. Wow, look at you. God's like, three wishes, come on, what do you want? That's pretty cool. So uh, Enos must be uh, pretty excited. All right, now behold, this was the, the desire which I desired of him, that if it should so be that my people the Nephites should fall into transgressions and that by it and by any means be destroyed, and the Lamanites should not be destroyed, that the Lord God would preserve a record of my people, the Nephites, even if it so be by the power of his holy arm, that it might be brought forth at some future day unto the Lamanites, that perhaps they might be brought unto salvation. Wow, Enos, that's that is pretty dumb. I'm sorry. God came down to me, he was right there, and he's like, you know what, you're so faithful, anything you want, anything you want. So you're thinking to yourself, I really want the Lamanites to be saved, right? That's what you want. So you could say, hey, God, can you make the Lamanites be saved? No, no, no. He's like, okay, here's what you're going to do, God. If the Lamanites happen to kill us all, can you just make sure our plates make it over to them? Because then maybe they'll read them and maybe they'll start believing. This is, this is, this is a terrible wish. <laughs> Seriously, you know, she should have thought that one through. That's not a, that's not a good wish. For at the present our struggles were vain in restoring them unto true faith. And they swore in their wrath that if it were possible, they would destroy our records and us, and also all the traditions of our fathers. All right, so he's, so he's like, we don't, we don't kill us. We don't care. Our lives are meaningless. But our plates, got to save the plates. Wherefore, I knowing that the Lord God was able to preserve our records, I cried unto him continually. For he had said unto me, whatsoever thing ye shall ask in faith, believing that ye shall receive in the name of Christ, ye shall receive it. Yeah, God reiterated. I think, I think God's looking at Enos like, Hey, Enos, just for the record, I said anything. You can wish for anything. This is real. This is what you want to use. You want this, the plates. That's your, hmm. And God's like, he's just trying to like, listen, seriously, anything. And <laughs> Enos is like, yeah, the plates. And God's like, huh? All right, I'll save your freaking plates. All right. And I had faith, and I did cry unto God that he would preserve the records, and he covenanted with me that he would bring them forth unto the Lamanites in his own due time. <laughs> so he's like, all right, he knows your wish is so dumb. I'm not even going to bring him the plates like now. No, I'm going to do it when I get around to it. Because I'm God, I'm busy. I've got a universe to run. Well, we'll get their plates eventually. Don't worry about it. And I, Enos, knew it would be according to the covenant which he had made. Wherefore, my soul did rest. 
Oh, very nice, Enos. He's like, I'm good to go. Ah, I can rest easy now. And the Lord said unto me, Thy fathers have also required of me this thing, and it shall be done unto them according to their faith, for their faith was like unto thine. What are they talking about? All right, so I think he's saying, Enos, Jacob asked for the same thing. Why didn't he do it for him? That is weird. Because it's basically, it's like, I guess God, like, gave this this wish thing to, like, a whole bunch of them. Maybe even Nephi was in on this. Thy fathers. How does he have, how do you have more than one father? I don't, I don't understand how fathers could be plural. But anyway, apparently God has given this wish to other people. And all of them said, well, whatever you do, make sure the Lamanites get those places. And so God's like, you know what? They, they had the same faith as you. So now I really have to do it. All of you are asking for the same thing. And now it came to pass, Drake, that I, Enos, went about among the people of Nephi, prophesying of things to come, and testifying of the things which I had heard and seen. All right. And I bear record that the people of Nephi did seek diligently to restore the Lamanites unto the true faith in God. But our labors were in vain, their hatred was fixed, and they were led by the evil nature that they became wild and ferocious, and a bloodthirsty people full of idolatry and filthiness, feeding upon beasts of prey, dwelling in tents... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that made me think back to when Nephi just kept saying, or I don't know if it was Nephi, but whoever was writing about uh, Lehi, and he kept saying, like, Lehi dwelt in a tent. <laughs> Lehi dwelt in a tent. <laughs> it's like, okay, great, good for him. Anyway, so yeah, these evil uh, Lamanites, they're also dwelling in tents. Meow. And wandering about in the wilderness with a short skirt girdle about their loins and their heads shaven. And their skill was in the bow and in the cemeter. What in the world is that? C-I-M-E-T-E-R. Cemeter? Uh, I don't know. So when I don't know a word, I can on an e-reader you can like tap the word, and then it'll give you like the, de the dictionary definition. <laughs> it said, no definition found. So I have no idea what that is. Uh, okay, the cemeter, cemeter, and the axe. So they they can shoot bows, and they can cemeter the crap out of stuff, and and they're pretty good with an axe. So there you go. And many of them did eat nothing, save it was raw meat. <laughs> and they were continually seeking to destroy us. Man, that sounds like some rough people. Now, first off, let's go back to the fact that the root cause of the hatred of the Nephites. Okay, so why do the Lamanites hate the Nephites so much? Well, it's kind of because Nephi never shut up. Never shut up about how bad they were. About how bad Laman and Lemuel were, right? constantly on their case. Mm, you got to believe in Christ. Brr, we got to leave Jerusalem. Brr, we got to cross the ocean. Brr. It was like he was just constantly preaching to them. And this is also a society where like the elder brother had like status. And so they're like, Nephi was the young one. And they were like, dude, you don't even like, you're a little brother. Shut up. <laughs> right. But he wouldn't stop. He just, he was relentless about it. And so they were just like, dude, if you don't shut up, we, we, we are going to kill you. We will literally end your life if you don't stop talking. And he just wouldn't. So finally, once Nephi is like, oh my God, that wasn't an empty threat. They really are going to kill me. They are that sick of me. He like left, right? He fled and started this other civilization. So the old blood, the old bad blood is still there. So we've got, so now the Lamanites just like, but but sounds like, I think the Lamanites would leave well enough alone. I, I mean, based on what I'm reading, I think they would just be like, you know what? Nephites left, fine. Let them have their own little town. We don't really care. But... It's saying that the Nephites kept going back. So they weren't done. It says that the people of Nephi did seek diligently to restore the Lamanites under the true faith in God. So th they're still at it. <laughs> right? Generations later, these, these Lamanites are like, oh my God, you're still talking about this? <laughs> Leave us alone. So it's no wonder that they've like just made a blood oath to kill them all because it's like we can't live like this. We can't live with constantly being told that we're evil. I just we've had enough. Ugh, all right, and apparently they've they've just gone mad with with all of this constant preaching because now they're just like eating raw meat and they're wild and bloodthirsty. They're just like they have, oof, they've they've literally talked them into insanity. So good job, Nephites. Hope you're proud of yourselves. And it came to pass drink that the people of Nephi did till the land and raise all the manner of grain and fruit and flocks and herds and flocks of all manner of cattle of every kind and goats and wild goats and also many horses. All right. We won't get into the fact that there weren't really horses in North America during this time period. Whatever, we'll let that go. But uh, it is interesting that they're trying to draw a distinction between like the Lamanites were kind of the 
hunter-gatherer tribe, right? And then the Nephites were the agrarian, 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 I think is the word. Yeah, so they're like making farms and they're starting to domesticate animals. So there you go. Good old, uh, the Nephites are evolving as a society and the Lamanites are not. Hmm. And there were exceedingly many prophets among us and the people were a stiff-necked people. Hard to understand. <laughs> Wait, what? I, oof. So, there were many prophets among us, and if this is Enos talking, then it means the prophets were among the Nephites. And then it says, and the people were a stiff-necked people, hard to understand. What, who is the people? The Nephites? You couldn't understand your own people? I mean, I guess you could be talking about the Lamanites, but I don't, you should have said that. I don't, I don't who cares? Everybody's stiff-necked in this book at some point. And there was nothing save it was exceeding harshness, preaching and prophesying of wars and contentions and destructions and continually reminding them of death. <laughs> That's great. So what do these prophets do? They just stand up there and like, everyone's going to die. It's going to be awful. Just one after the other, the prophets are getting up there being like, oof, yeah, just total destruction coming. Hope you guys are ready. And what, 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 that's not value added, right? I mean, you even need to know. Hey, seriously, I, do, do you want to know? Uh, anyway. And the duration of eternity and the judgments and the power of God and all these things. Stirring them up continually to keep them in the fear of the Lord. <laughs> it's great. So basically, if they ever start to wander, better pull out the scare tactics and really drive them hard to bring that, uh, loosen up those stiff necks. And I say there was nothing short of these things, and exceedingly great plainness of speech would keep them from going down speedily to destruction. And after this manner, do I write concerning them? Well, I love this. They're, they're actually, he's actually saying, Enos is saying that, yeah, all we did was the scare tactic, right? It's, he's pretty specific about it. Like, they don't, they didn't, they did not offer any benefit to believing, right? Or behaving. So they didn't, they didn't do the, uh, heaven's a great place. They just kept scaring the crap out of people. Eternal damnation. All right. So I, it seems like it worked. So they scared people back into submission. There's a good way to govern. And I saw wars between the Nephites and Lamanites in the course of my days. Again, they're not going to describe it. They're just going to tell us. Hmm. And it came to pass, drink, that I began to, to be old, and a hundred and seventy and nine years had passed away from the time that our father Lehi left Jerusalem. A hundred and seventy-nine years from 600 B.C. I'm not going to do the math. Mid-400 B.C., I guess, at this point. And I saw that I must soon go down to my grave. How come only once did they say gave up the ghost? That was a great way to talk about dying. Anyway, having been wrought upon the, brought upon by the power of God that I must preach and prophesy unto this people and declare the word according to the truth which is in Christ. And I have declared it in all my days and I have rejoiced in it above that of the world. And I soon go to the place of my rest, which is with my Redeemer. For I know that in him I shall rest. And I rejoice in the day when my mortal shall be put on immortality and shall stand before him. Then shall I see his face with pleasure. And he will say unto me, Come unto me, ye blessed. There is a place prepared for you in the mansions of my father. Amen. Huh. Uh, there's mansions in heaven now. Got a little picture of heaven. It's kind of being uh, revealed to us one layer at a time. So first all we heard was a bunch of people in robes wandering around. And now we're being told it's a place of rest with mansions. Well, there you go. Yeah, that got to be good. And that, wow, look at that. That was it. That was, uh, we're done with Enos. What a short one. One chapter. And next we have the book of J Jerom. J-A-R-O-M. Jerom. I'm saying Jerom. Jerome would be funnier though, right? <laughs> if I called him Jerome? <laughs> I Maybe that is his name. I don't know. Maybe it is Jerome. But I think Jerome, probably. Because, I, I don't know, wouldn't you need an E on the end for it to be Jerome? I don't know. Whatever. We're going with Jerome. Book of Jerom. All right. Uh, let's see what how much time we got. Yeah, I got time for this. At least first chapter. Okay. Now behold, I, Jerome, write a few words according to the commandments of my father Enos, that our genealogy may be kept. Ah, there you go. Jerome is the son of Enos. So he is Jacob's grandson. So Nephi would have been his great uncle, if I'm doing that math right. And as these plates are small, and as these things are written for the intent of the benefit of our brethren, the Lamanites, wherefore it must needs be that I write a little, but I shall not write the things of my prophesying. Oh, thank God. I like you already, Jerem. Uh, nor my revelation. So, Jerem saying, look, I had tons of prophecies. It's tons of stuff is revealed to me, but I'm not going to write it down. Good job, Jerem. Just tell us what happened. That's all. We just want the story. We don't want to hear about the voices in your head, really. We just don't. For what could I write more than my fathers have written? <laughs> I don't know. 
So you're saying that you had the same revelations as them? What's the point of having them? I don't know, whatever. For have they not revealed the plan of salvation? Kind of. But anyway, I say unto you, yea, drink, and this sufficeth me. Okay, I'm glad you're sufficed. Well, then why write anything? <laughs> well, maybe we'll find out. I'm, I'm being presumptuous. Behold, it is expedient, but much should be done among this people, because of the hardness of their hearts, and the deafness of their ears, and the blindness of their minds, and the stiffness of... Hmm, what could be stiff? Their necks. Nevertheless, God is exceedingly merciful unto them. Is he now? And he has not yet swept them off the face of the land. <laughs> That's awesome. The fact that they continue to breathe is proof of God's mercy. Hmm. Isn't that true of all of us? Because we really are. We're just one like whim away from God just burning us all. So he's clearly he's merciful. We're alive, aren't we? I mean, there's many of people in the world starving to death and going through immense pain and torture. But they're not dead. God's mercy. Lovely. And there are many among us who have many revelations, for they are not all stiff-necked. <laughs> That's awesome. So, as long as you're not stiff-necked, you can have yourself your own revelation. Fantastic. Get me some plates. I'm going to start, start writing my own. And as many are not stiff-necked and have faith and have communion with the Holy Spirit, which maketh manifest unto the children of men according to their faith. Hmm. That is kind of funny. What does it take to communicate with the Holy Spirit? You have to believe he exists. So if you believe in an imaginary thing, then you can communicate with that imaginary thing. Imagine that. All right. And now, behold, 200 years have passed away, and the people of Nephi have waxed strong in the land. Well, there you go. Nephites are doing some strong waxing. That was great. They observed to keep the law of Moses and the Sabbath day holy unto the Lord. And they profaned not, neither did they blaspheme. And the laws of the land were exceedingly strict. <laughs> Oof. Okay, so this, is a, this does not sound like a fun place to live. Strict laws among the, the uh, Nephites. And also, when that, uh, what was his name, Sherem guy, when he came along and he was like, hey, you need to keep the law of Moses, and Jacob was like, well, that's bull crap. Why are you saying that? And now it's saying they are keeping the law of Moses. So I don't know what they were so mad about Sherem. I guess Sherem was also like, stop talking about Christ. He's, even if he's coming, it's a long ways away. It's not relevant. Anyway. Okay, so exceedingly strict laws. Mm. And they were scattered upon much of the face of the land, and the Lamanites also. Oh, I do. Wait, I did say it right. Lamanites also. Sorry, I thought I said it wrong. No, I said it right. Okay. And they were exceedingly more numerous than they were of the Nephites, and they loved murder. <laughs> they loved murder. That's awesome. Uh, and would drink the blood of beasts. Man, these uh, Lamanites are getting uh, worse and worse as the, as the story continues. So they love murder. <laughs> That's awesome. How can you love murder? Anyway, whatever. And it came to pass drink, but they came many times against us, the Nephites, to battle. Oh, we might actually get a story of a battle. This, this could be fun. All right, let's see what happens. But our kings and our leaders were mighty men in the faith of the Lord, that they taught the people the ways of the Lord. Wherefore, we withstood the Lamanites and swept them away out of our lands and began to fortify our cities or whatsoever place of our inheritance. Uh, okay, the reason I just kind of giggled throughout that it's saying, they taught the people the ways of the Lord, right? The ways of the Lord. It doesn't, doesn't say what the ways of the Lord's are, but then we get a little bit, a little bit more. So wherefore, because they were taught the ways of the Lord, they were able to fight well in battle. <laughs> That's great. Because they're basically like, let's face facts. The Lord is violent. He is a violent man. So let's learn his tricks because he clearly can smite anybody. So yeah, they're, uh, they must be out there like setting fields on fire with people in them or something. You know, if they're doing the ways of the Lord. Oh, I just thought that was funny. Sorry. Because usually it's like taught the ways of the Lord and you're thinking like, oh, to forgive and to, and to be generous. It's like, no, no, no. How to kill. <laughs> That's great. And we multiplied exceedingly. Mm -hmm. They're just, just popping babies out. Uh, and spread upon the face of the land and became exceedingly rich in gold and silver and precious things and in fine workmanships of wood in buildings and in machinery and also in iron and copper and brass and steel making all manner of tools of every kind to till the ground and weapons of war, yea, drink the sharp-pointed arrow, and the quiver, and the dart, and the javelin, and all preparations for war. <laughs> this is a real peaceful place. All right, so they had, I don't know, everything they need. Yeah, they got they got all the raw materials to make uh, make quite the arsenal. And thus being prepared to meet the Lamanites, they did not prosper against us. But the word of the Lord was verified, which he spake unto our fathers, saying that, Inasmuch as ye will keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in this land. Hmm. Okay, then it came to pass, drink. 
that the prophets of the Lord did threaten the people of Nephi. What? According to the word of God, that if they did not keep the commandments, they should fall into transgression. They would be destroyed from off the face of the land. Hmm. They weren't kidding when they said the uh, laws were strict in the old Nephite village, because apparently if you break any of the commandments, they will destroy you from off the face of the land. Whew. Well, again, they're, uh, they learned God's ways, and uh, that's what you do when you got to do a smiting. Wherefore, the prophets and the priests and the teachers did labor diligently, exhorting with all long-suffering of the people to diligence, teaching the law of Moses and the intent for which it was given, persuading them to look forward unto the Messiah and believe in him, to come as though he already was. And after this manner did they teach them. All right, so they're like, look, we know it's confusing with this whole Jesus isn't coming around for hundreds of years. Can we just pretend that he's here? Just pretend. Pretend he already came. That's kind of what that said. It's just like, it's kind of what it says. Believe in him to come as though he already was. <laughs> so it's like, forget that he's coming later. He's here right now. Just, oh, he's here. He's here. Just don't look. Don't turn around. He's right behind you. I swear. He's right there. Yeah. And it came to pass, drink again. My goodness. If anyone's still awake after drinking all that. Anyway. Uh, that by doing so, they kept from being destroyed upon the face of the land, for they did prick their hearts with the word, continually stirring them up into repentance. Prick their hearts with the word. Okay, that's another way of saying uh, they wouldn't shut the heck up, because that's just what it is. They're just saying that these prophets just kept telling these people, like, oh, you better believe or we're going to kill you. And it's like, okay, I believe. Mm, great. I mean, is that, is that, I mean, have you really converted someone? And be like, Follow all these rules. Believe in Christ. It's like, oh, okay. What if I don't? Well, I don't know. Kill you. <laughs> right? We have this huge army now with all these weapons. We'll just destroy you from the, off the face of the earth. What do you think of that? How does that sound? And it's like, okay. Yay, Jesus. <laughs> it's like, no wonder they keep becoming stiff-necked. They never really believed this nonsense. They were just, you know, their lives were threatened. They believe whatever you say. Anyway, this is great. This is a great system of government they have here. And it came to pass, drink, that two hundred and thirty and eight years had passed away. Okay, long time. After the manner of wars and contentions and dissensions for the space of much of the time. All right. So, I, what? So usually it would say like two hundred and whatever years since Lehi left Jerusalem, right? But this just said for the space of much of the time. So it's basically saying two hundred and thirty-eight years, if you were unaware. That's a long time. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Wait, just, wait, who is this? What's the name of this book? Jerome. That's right. Jerome. That's right. Or Jerome. One of the two. So thanks for that little tidbit. The 238 years is indeed a decent amount of time in, in the space of humans. Anyway. And I, Jerome. Oh, there he is again. Do not write more, for the plates are small. <laughs> the plates are small. That's awesome. So Nephi must have just had like these massive plates because he got two whole books and they were long. And uh, yeah, but Jerome's like, well, I got this little plate. So I better be careful. Tiny little plate. Nothing left. All right. But behold, my brethren, ye can go to the other plates of Nephi. For behold, upon them the records of our wars are engraven, according to the writings of the kings, or those which are caused to be written. What? what? So there's other... They better be in here. Because it's now saying that the record of the wars are actually on some other plates. But we've read the plates of Nephi, one and two, and there were no wars. Hmm... I don't know. There better be some wars coming. I've been told there's battle chapters. And I keep waiting for them. They haven't happened yet. I keep, I keep prepping. I mean, this one's like, oh, yeah, you have this, the army's getting ready. It's probably like a montage, right? Collecting all the, all the raw materials and, and they're, they're, you know, make a foundry, then get steel, and now they're making arrows and javelins, and it's like, bah, 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 you know, cue the inspirational music. Or not inspirational, it'd be more like a, I don't know, like a battle song, right? So they're all getting ready, and it's like, and? Yeah, I'm not going to write about it. That's somewhere else. Like, oh, stop doing that. You get me all this build up, and then you just end. All right. And I deliver these plates into the hands of my son, Omni. Okay, that they may be kept according to the commandments of my fathers. Omni. Well, uh, I don't think we have time for Omni. I don't know. Although, let me see. Oh, this is short. One chapter. Yeah, I can't do it. How would I even make this in the title, right? I mean, I, I now have to have like three different book names in the title of this file. I don't, that's going to be long. Anyway, yeah, I think it's time to end it. I think we're done. I think we're, we're totally done. Uh, all right, so that was it for chapter or episode 18. Hope you guys are all still enjoying this. All the mimos out there, hope you're, hope you're liking the show. And if you really like it, then you can let me know 
by various ways, boy, I was really tempted to say you could always go and leave a nice review on iTunes or Stitcher. But I, I know that we're past that point in our relationship where I ask for that, right? I mean, we're beyond that. So I don't have to ask. Yeah, okay. But you can also uh, send me a tweet or follow me on Twitter, at My Book of Mormon. Or you can go to the Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash My Book of Mormon Podcast. And the website and email I already gave at the beginning of the show, so I don't have to repeat that again. All right. Well, this was fun. And I know this was a, another midweek episode I threw in there. Hope you guys are appreciating those. Not not the easiest thing in the world for me to get a midweek out, but I, I'm going to try and do it as often as I can. And, uh, yeah, I should have another episode 19 should be coming out on Monday. So that's it for now. You guys are the best. My Mo's Rock, and we'll see you next time. This song is licensed for use within this podcast. All song and copyright information can be found at www. Dot my book of Mormon podcast dot com. Show me here to the